you would like to benefit from these more and more and also be a part of our golf tournament that is coming up soon um, in July, yeah, yeah. that's a big deal as well, um, please sign, try and sign up um, for the society and all of that will be able to make this, just enhance this speaker series and the society just even more. So um, just to clarify that, today we have Brandon Winters from Stukin. We have any other announcements? So, anyways, I'll leave Haley up to uh, introduce him. Okay, yeah, so like Michelle said, Brandon's here with us. We're super excited to learn a little bit more about professional sales. You can kind of glean some information about his career path. Um, I'm just going to read his bio and introduce him really quick, and then we'll turn the time over to Brandon. Um, so, Brandon attended BYU Provo, where he met his wife, Meredith. They both graduated from there and have five happy and energetic young boys. He and his wife spend a lot of time in church callings. Sorry, I just saw this and I was like, <laughs> okay, I'll introduce him in a second. Let's thank the Lord for this meeting. Um, <laughs> Christina, could you pray for us? Our dear, kind, and gracious Heavenly Father, we're grateful for this day and we're so grateful for the opportunity that we have to come together um, as the Marketing Society. Lord, we're grateful for the Society and for this institution and the ability that we have to progress towards um, successful careers. Lord, we're grateful for thy son, Jesus Christ, and especially his Lord and Savior, Mary Valentine, who has made our lives so much better and so better. Lord, we're grateful for um, Brandon and for him being here today to share um, a little bit about his journey with us. We love you so very much, Father, in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. It's going to be so much better now. Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Um, Okay, so he and his wife spend a lot of time in church callings, traveling, and coaching several sports, including soccer, wrestling, basketball, baseball, football, and a kid's obstacle, obstacle course racing. Um, Brandon graduated from the Marriott School of Business in spring of 2010 with a degree in recreation management, um, now called experience design and management, and a minor in business management. He began his career in corporate America where he led several teams in Target supply chain for almost four years as an operations manager and executive trainer. He directly led the two top performing teams out of all 28 distribution centers in Target Tempur. He found his true passion when in the startup world when he feels his efforts directly impact the success of the company. He took a leap of faith and joined Stukent in 2014 after they finished piloting their first simulation with BYU and Oregon State University. He is now the vice president of Stukent and has helped take Stukent's sales efforts from ground zero to an Inc. 500 company where they now help hundreds of thousands of students in over 40 countries. Brandon also sits on an advisory board for BYU's Pre-Business Student Association and PCA, a nonprofit career and technical student organization with over 250,000 students, where he spends most of his time mentoring students while providing BYU and PCA with a better understanding of the students' needs. He loves networking with students and helping them identify career paths and opportunities that best align with their goals and passions. Let's give it up for Brandon. How's everybody doing? Doing good? How many are already signed up for the professional sales emphasis? I'm just curious. Okay, we have a few people turn. All right, fantastic. Um, but how do we start off with priorities here? Praying for the government, bringing back the church kids. Um, just got this up here. Feel free to reach out to me after this. Um, I'd love to connect with you, talk with you more about the career path you're considering, or even if you're interested in some other things. So, uh, here's the here's my tribe. So I've got five young boys, and um, this is my why. Anytime you start a career path, anytime things get, anytime challenges come along in, in your job, may, maybe the day to day grind can be rough got to remember what you're doing it for. Um, but I want to just talk to you a little bit about uh, some of the experiences I had while I was in school, and then shortly thereafter, how Stu Kent's evolved and kind of my role in sales along the way. Um, so you guys can get an idea of one option. Uh, there's so many different career paths people take, and sometimes it can feel like a lot of this to find your way, and sometimes it's like going one direction in supply chain, and then you're going to ed tech, next thing you know. So uh, be patient through the process, 
and gain as much experience now as you can. So one of my um, first experiences while I was in school was with a company called Elite Sales. Um, I hesitate saying this, but when most people think of sales, we talked about this in the lunchroom before, um, they think of car salesmen or people who go to their sales meetings, right? Is that kind of the first thing that comes to mind for a lot of you guys? Yeah. Um, so I did door-to-door -door sales for three years, fantastic opportunity to get out, and there's a few things that I learned. One was just being able to communicate effectively with folks face-to-face, -face, um, learning how to grind it out for goals that you've set and find your inner grit. Um, but I would say when it comes to some of the finesse of sales techniques, that came later on as I spent more time in uh, more sales tech, like technical sales roles, um, on webinars, at conferences, at those types of situations. Um, when I was in school, I thought sports marketing was the direction that I was gonna take. And so naturally, got an internship with BYU in their um, athletic department. And internships are fantastic because they'll help you understand that you probably that you either love it or you hate it. Um, for me, I found through that internship that I enjoy being a fan in sporting arenas. I don't enjoy worrying about halftime shows and throwing out promotional apparel. Um, for me, it was a great experience to kind of be behind the scenes. I was there during like the Jimmer Fredette era, um, so really fun time. Uh, but that internship helped me to learn uh, that that was not the career path. I also spent a little bit of time at a nonprofit organization called Now I Can. Um, we help kids with cerebral palsy. That was a challenging internship for me. Um, worked with a lot of young kids, and they'd come in and they'd be working out with um, a, lot of, a lot of stretching and movements um, with a physical therapist. And my internship uh, was really to keep them distracted while they were being worked on and stretched out. And that was really hard for young kids that were crying or hurting, uh, keeping them positive or keeping them upbeat and positive and motivated uh, through their therapy. So lots of different types of roles and different types of organizations. Um, I would say while you're in school, have the mindset, um, this is the phase of life where I need to be learning. And that should continue throughout your entire career in life. But I think sometimes we get so focused on what's the one that's going to pay me the most now. Um, think of it not monetarily, but in terms of the experience that you can gain, um, which will help in the long run. Uh, last one I'm going to point out is a company called Entice Labs. Um, this was back in 2009, 2010, when online advertising was still relatively <coughs> new. So for us, we thought it was really cool to say that we did recruitment advertising online for uh, like job postings. Um, so we had companies like IBM and Intel and Adidas that were all customers of ours when we were a young startup. So we had these really big businesses as clients. Um, the company still fell about two years in. Um, I learned a lot about team building, um, about a product that maybe wasn't the right fit in the market. Um, I also learned I, did a, I could do a pretty good job behind a computer, kind of grinding it out um, with phone calls and webinars to sell a product or service. So find what you're good at, what you're passionate about, um, and also learn about maybe some of the um, weaknesses or opportunities that you have in your career. I'm going to try to jam a little quicker, and at the end here, we're going to just stop. If you guys have questions along the way, feel free to, to shout it out. So a few things I wanted to kind of point out to you guys that I, I had learned while I was in school still. Find an internship now. Um, all of you guys are gonna have a seven week break this summer. Um, have an opportunity to go gain an experience or just hang out. Um, the latter probably sounds a little better after a lot of work in school. So my recommendation, if you're gonna stick around here in town, there's plenty of companies looking to hire. So start looking at those now. Uh, I never participated in a club on campus, and I'm excited to be a part of the Marketing Society here. This is fantastic. Um, I 
get involved in uh, different clubs on campus. Lots of networking opportunities are available to you guys, so take advantage of those. We had about a dozen students that were in the luncheon prior to this, and those are great opportunities just to kind of mix and mingle with each other, and then also professionals that are coming in, um, where you can just get really just their perspective and hopefully learn something from some of their mistakes as well. Uh, fourth one, this is something I learned early on and then um, into my career as well, is finding a good mentor. One of the pieces of advice I got um, early on was build your own personal board of directors. So every CEO has their board of directors that keeps them in line, uh, making sure that they're being financially responsible, but also that they're continuing down the, the path and vision and road, roadmap that they've set out. Your personal board of directors can do the same exact thing for you. So think about those people in your life. Pick people from different parts of your life as well. Uh, for me, I've got an old, an old bishop that I still keep in touch with uh, that is a great mentor, uh, father-in-law. Um, I've got my financial advisor is fantastic for my board. So find those people that will have a different perspective, different opinion, but also that are willing to uh, keep you in line, give candid feedback, and that you can just bounce ideas off of. So find, find out who those folks are. Uh, also, a spouse is a fantastic, uh, fantastic mentor for you. Um, fifth one, uh, so one of, the, one of the students had asked in the luncheon, like, where can I spend some of my time now preparing for like a sales role? And I would say if there's a specific industry you're interested in, find those communities online and start getting involved in those now. Start, start figuring out what are the challenges they're facing, what direction are they going, what problems can you solve if you enter that industry. Uh, LinkedIn is a great place to start finding those mentors. And then the last one, never stop learning, so big fan of Audible. I, so our, our office was originally here in Rexburg. Now we're down in Idaho Falls. It's the uh, last building before you enter the Idaho Falls Airport. So not that far of a commute if you're looking for an internship. Um, but great for Audible, podcasts, if you've got time on the road, or walking tours. So um, I started off as an operations, operations manager at Target in their supply chain. So naturally you go from Rec management major to supply chain. Uh, you never know where you're gonna end up. My brother-in-law was in Target for about seven or eight years at the time. He mentioned I should take a look at it. I originally thought like red khakis at a storefront, um, but the supply chain side is a whole different world behind the scenes. And it's pretty neat to be able to go into a big company like this, big organization that's well-oiled machine, very structured, uh, they've got a mentorship program in place, they've got training in place. They do a lot with their uh, young leaders to develop them. So I was recent college grad, leading two different teams of about 20 warehouse workers each. And uh, we had a day crew that were really made up of a lot of like 40 and 50 year olds. Uh, they've been in the building for about 20 years. And then there's me like this recent college grad that's supposed to be their leader. So you learn pretty quickly how to listen empathize, um, be open uh, to new ideas, get creative. A lot of those team members had some phenomenal ideas and they felt like their ideas were never heard. And so being able to use them, leverage them as a resource, um, allow them to kind of test and try new things and share that with headquarters. We had the opportunity to do a lot of those really cool things um, along the way. And the general manager of the building that I was in, so. There's 28 distribution centers throughout Target. You can probably count them if you look a little over 30 now. Um, but each one of them has a, a leadership team, and I was fortunate to be on a leadership team that's very competitive, but also focused really well on um, company like team morale and uh, quality, not just productivity. And being well rounded, bless you, being well rounded like that um, early on helped me to understand. probably wouldn't have gotten if I had just jumped back into another startup and jumped right into something like that, where a lot of people maybe didn't have those experiences. Um, and in my picture here, um, the 
Brother Megan and I were talking a little bit about these two different worlds. You've got the big business corporate world, and then you've got startup. And there's so many different perspectives on the pros and cons of each. And some people look at startups as really glamorous. And the reality is it's not like that most of the time, where you just feel like pushing a boulder uphill all day, every day. Um, and then there's times in the corporate world where you feel like, man, I'm just a cog in the wheel. I'm just, I'm just running, running this race and I'm not moving anywhere. I don't feel like I'm making as big of an impact as I could. And the reality is there's great opportunities and experiences for your head and heart, but I would say different personalities fit well or better into certain categories. So um, I would say test them both out and see what makes sense for you. But um, in my situation, I would say, get that early on before you graduate. So maybe shoot for a big, big company, big corporate sales role now. And then if that doesn't work out, or it does, and you still have time before you graduate, there's plenty of startup companies in this area for you to go work at. Would you say when you got your internship for a big startup in Silicon Valley, what was more helpful? Was it the advice they gave you from their experience, or was it some of the feedback they gave you through the internship process? Um, it was probably more valuable when it was specific to like experience, what I was experiencing at the time. So I'm having trouble with this team member or my boss is telling me to do this, but I won't do that. Those, those types of things that maybe you wouldn't feel comfortable going to another employee about. Um, because when you learn early on in the professional environment, the last thing you want to do is be complaining about the challenges you're facing um, to those laterally. Kind of. You want to be more about that to the boss, to, to your boss or your direct report before you're getting feedback out there and engaging with them. Um, and so those were specific examples. And others were like, you know, I'm two and a half years in or I'm three years in. And have I learned everything I want to learn? Have I accomplished what I want to accomplish? And where do I go now? And then you just don't have that perspective of what else is out there. And so that mentor that's maybe 20 years or 15 years ahead of you in your career can maybe see what you might be facing. If you have any other questions, you can ask. Yeah. I just want to quickly show this video. Tell the Seacamp story. Yeah, that's fine. Um, go to the room. Sorry, whatever. Um, <laughs> right. So, Stu Katie. Yes, you. Yes, you. Jim went to register for classes, only to find they don't teach the online marketing course he is interested in taking. Professor Bob is a professor at ASU. Professor Bob didn't grow up with the internet. When he was in college, they didn't teach internet marketing, but Professor Bob wants to keep ASU awesome. He searched for an online marketing textbook, but they are all outdated. He searched for free blog posts, but they are not trustworthy sources and they quickly become outdated. He would have to find new blog posts each semester. He finds online courses, but they are expensive, designed for professionals, not college students. And worst of all, rather than help Professor Bob teach the course, they simply replace the need for Professor Bob by including the lectures online, ignoring the value of professor-student interaction. Then Professor Bob finds Stukent.com. Stukent is changing the world of online marketing education and higher education and helping traditional university professors help their students take advantage of this opportunity to learn internet marketing while they are in college. Stukent offers a 100% digital online marketing textbook that is always kept up to date. You can access it from your phone, tablet, laptop, or desktop. Stukent students and professors also enjoy weekly Stukent webinars with industry experts. 
an Entrepreneur of the Year competition with prize money for the winners. The Stukin Real Deal Simulation creates the perfect atmosphere for experiential learning. And all of the Stukin students are awarded a Stukin Certificate of Completion. Stukin.com also provides an intern job posting board to connect Stukin students with employers. Not to mention the blog, grading platform, quizzes, tests, case studies, and student and professor dashboards. Needless to say, Professor Bob has saved the day with a little help from Stukin, and ASU is still awesome state university to this day. So, I was almost four years in at Target. I saw this video online, and Stu Draper, who's the founder of Stukin, reached out to me and said, hey, I know you live in uh, right next to Oregon State uh, University, Corvallis. Um, I'm coming out because they're actually piloting our simulation right now. So BYU and Oregon State are piloting our uh, very first simulation. And I went and sat in the back of the class as the students had just finished the simulation for the first semester. And I saw how engaged the students were, how much they had learned throughout even their experience in the class. And some of them even like changed their majors or careers uh, or their career focus as a result of and it was like light bulb moment for me. There's a new way for students to learn. Um, at the same time, it's like okay, so I've got this startup that is not going to pay me a salary, not going to pay me benefits, or a 401k match. And then on the other end, it's like I have options to go uh, to headquarters at Target. Um, I had an offer from Amazon and Home Depot to do something similar in supply chain. And it's like okay, well Amazon, that sounds cool. Like that'd be great on my resume. But I had already done four years in that space, and I knew the startup space was where I, my personality fit, um, where I could make the biggest impact. And so it kind of comes down to each individual to decide. Um, Stu was actually teaching Brother Ludwin, or taking Brother Ludwin's class here uh, when he was a student, and that's where he was first introduced to internet marketing, digital marketing. And then later, I think Brother Ludwin got to go teach at BYU for life for a little bit, and then uh, Stu got to come and teach as an adjunct professor, and um, that's where he saw how hard it was to keep this course current and relevant. And so that's kind of where the inception of StuCamp came from. Our slogan is stay current, and our mission is to help educators help students help the world. And digital marketing is where we got our start, um, and it's not our defining product yet. We still have to scratch and claw that just yet. Um, we're in over a dozen different social media marketing. So you have, there's about a, a thousand high schools right now that are teaching social media marketing at Butler Media, which is really cool. So it's gonna, we're going to see this evolution of um, students learning some of these fundamentals and curriculum of social media marketing in high school. And that means that the um, expectations at the higher education level are only going to only gonna rise. So when we started five years ago, most of the top 20 business schools weren't even teaching digital marketing. Um, so BYU Actually, that's the Kent and Stu Kent. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. So Stu and Kent makes up Stu Kent. It's also a play off of Q. And uh, since that time, we're uh, now an 500 company. Um, so one of our fastest growing privately held companies in the country, which is pretty awesome. Um, since our beginning, we've doubled the growth of our team. Um, we've now got uh, just over 60 over 60 employees at this point. Um, and I wish we had a crystal ball that told us what phase three looked like. Uh, the reality is we don't. Uh, we're continuing to grind it out. We're continuing to hire talented folks um, and, and trust them to help push things forward in their respective departments. Um, but this is kind of the mindset that we have. It's more of a futurist mindset uh, where we are focused on, really we feel like our, it's our responsibility to improve education across the board. And so we started with digital marketing, social media marketing, and now do a lot, since we got all these marketing folks here, um, we got professors in here too. Market research, consumer behavior, business writing, um, and then we're starting to get in, look at some other areas like finance and IT um, and marketing. Um, we'll help 
hold off on this one, but this is another testimonial video that a student actually played through our simulation, uh, talked about his experience in the interview theater and being a child of Christ, and had some relevance to his experience. Um, so there's, there's value in picking the right courses while you're here in school as well. I highly recommend, and I just heard email marketing Negotiations, sales and negotiations. I've heard at least a handful of students from Ross Luncheon that changed their career path, at least from the sales and selling factors. So take a look at those courses. Um, one of the things that I love about uh, BYU Idaho is the amount of mentoring that your professors do in the classroom. Um, I didn't get that in general, and I partly on me for not taking time to kind of sit down after but the class sizes were much larger. Um, I felt like it had a much more, so this is a really good course to test out. I'd say, as you're looking at a, a board of advisors, a board of directors, look at your professors. Okay, I want to talk just real quick about um, how our, our teams transform. Um, so you can see kind of what that evolution looks like in the startup world if they're growing well. There's others that might, startups that might stay stagnant and remain a small team, um, maybe strategically or maybe because they just can't sell. Um, but we've seen a lot of rapid growth. And when we started, there was myself and one other person. We each had half the world and half the company likely. And we were closing deals for universities that were teaching digital marketing. Um, we were selling one product. We had a stay-at-home mom that worked part-time for us cooking demos. For the first year and a half, that was actually a really good model for us. So I think um, when you go into startup, you can, what's really cool is you get to wear multiple hats, but you also get to be a part of a lot of strategic discussions. Um, we found early on, stay-at-home moms were a fantastic resource for us to do a lot of email marketing and initial outreach to professors who could work directly with us. Um, so it was great for them for some additional income. Uh, we enjoyed it. We obviously enjoy the company now. Um, we've been at like five conferences our, our first year. Um, and almost everything was outbound effort. Not a whole lot was coming our way. Um, and so really, I think we're beyond the 12 month mark. Even though we had a fantastic VP of marketing that was growing, I mean, we just, the majority of the years were still outbound effort. Um, I call it the cowboy gunslingers, but really when you're in a startup, it's like the Wild West, and you're just, it's go time. Like, just pick up the phone. Just start calling. I think too many people get hung up in what's the best strategy to move forward, and sometimes the best strategy is just to start, and then you'll fine-tune it as you go. We didn't have a script when we started. We had to create that. So we had email scripts, so long-term email checklists. Anybody doing sales currently for a company? Yeah? What kind of, what kind of sales role or what kind of industry? If you're a gamer, so just... Just, just order to sell you just fine. Yeah. That's great. What, uh, what industry? Construction. That's construction. Okay. Tell us about your selling experience. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. okay. Um, so we were very strategic in the title that we chose for our account executives early on. We wanted this to be a very consultative sales approach. Um, so we didn't come at this very pushy, like, hey, this is the best product out there. We had met, in our mind, we had to believe that it was and know that it was. Um, but for professors, they'll have the, in most situations, the freedom to kind of choose the material they want to use. And so it's about taking time to understand the needs of your customer, your target audience. Um, what challenges are they facing? And how can you help them? Um, our most valuable resource for professors are actually like the lesson plans, the PowerPoint slides, the quizzes, um, and then the simulation. Um, the textbooks are just, they're great. It's great to have continuously updated content. It's all those support materials, and then some type of hands-on experience for your students. That's what's gonna really make it impactful. Um, and then the, the team has transformed over time. We, we had a time where we tried out, I'm gonna be tr real transparent here about all the different things that we tried out. Um, <laughs> So one of them was we tried, when we entered the high school market, 
we hired a bunch of 1099 independent contractors, commission only, door to door approach. Um, fantastic start. Most of them dropped out, and the ones that remained, we found like because they were only worried about the commission, they were not uh, really good at gathering data and thinking long term about how am I going to help this customer. It's like, how am I going to bring on someone as quickly as possible? It's not the best road for us to go down. So we really quickly learned that that was not a good strategy. All those that remained moved into an either an hourly or salary, salary position based on their work. You got to try different things before you. I would say compensation models and the way that compensation is set up in an organization will drastically impact the results of your hiring as well. So the intention, uh, how motivated they are, whether they're going to continue to work at other places or just um, see a, a long-term fit and what opportunity to bring compensation. And so our compensation model has changed over time. My compensation model has changed. And it's only gotten better as time has gone by. So you have to be willing to kind of see something through. And most of your first jobs or responsibility that you're probably interested in long term and you've got to start you've got to start now. Um, so on the marketing side for the first almost three years, it was a one man show. Trevor Erickson, Lord Ray, the extra guy. Uh, he, he's been in a lot of classes. He would be a great speaker for you to talk to. Um, probably better for myself. And Trevor is phenomenal at what he does. And the reality is he carried the workload of like five folks for the first three years. And in the startup environment, you're probably going to carry that same type of load for a while um, before you get some help. So you hire when it works. That's our approach. He's actually just this last week was moved up to uh, the CMO of our, our company, uh, a much more strategic role. Another person who graduated from Hilton, or actually graduated from Red Rifle, one of our students from here. And some of them spent some time at Mel Luca um, or some other smaller companies. And it's been really neat to see that um, evolve. So, how many of you guys are um, looking at getting into a marketing role as a salesperson? Okay, I'll, I'll spend some time talking about that. Um, so, we've got product marketing managers, and I would say the Best person to, to um, take off with this role is um, Garrett, who's over. He's now the VP of marketing. He came from Melaleuca, where he managed um, a multi-million-dollar product. When, you're, when you go to a company like Melaleuca, it's all commit marketers, right? If you're over some big brands that maybe you shouldn't be over uh, as a product marketing manager because you're still really young, um, but you learn a lot about how to launch a product, um, how to do the right market research. A lot of those things that actually we learn in school are relevant to those um, not necessarily product and organization management. Um, and so they they spend a lot of time with the authors of our digital textbooks. So we have, for example, our social media um, textbook is written by a professor from the University of Oxford and another one from Northeastern. And our product marketing manager will do a lot of market research figuring out what are those tools or or resources that are most valuable in the industry right now, or what are the current trends, and making sure that every six months that author has those um, updates so they can put that into our, our digital textbook. Um, we also spend a lot of time creating video content, um, creating uh, testimonials. We've got our first, um, first ever professor conference that we're putting on. And those conferences that professors go to are in like big cities. Because we're like Southeast Idaho, we're going to Yellowstone. So right in West Yellowstone this summer, we've got professors coming from all over, uh, all over the world that will be um, participating in our first digital marketing marketing summit. And those product marketing managers will have their own booth set up. They'll have a, a support uh, rep. They'll have a sales rep um, themselves, and they'll just be reintroducing the professors to all the latest and greatest ideas in the industry. So there's a lot of great things. There and they also do some market research on maybe products or courses that we should be getting into next. So they're thinking uh, to the future as well. Um, they're spending a lot of time with our sales folks when it comes to email marketing strategies to say, hey, here's a great thing you can send out. And 
So if you're a good writer, that's super helpful. That will help you land internships with them. Um, but I think we're looking for more of the soft skill position. Uh, we've got a content team that uh, is focused on editing the things that we draw for us. Uh, we've got videographers. We have one videographer and then another one that's a part time also a part time um, designer and then a data analyst. And I'll talk about that one for a second. So again, when you join a startup, there's a lot of roles that aren't filled. You gotta wear a lot of hats. If you're taking initiative and you're showing off the strengths that you have in certain areas, and the company finally, there comes to a point where you're showing that skill set, you're taking that initiative, and the company is finally in a position to hire for that role, the chances of you moving into that really creative role are very good. And David Hills, also a DLM student, former DLM student, uh, really into data analytics, uh, started off in sales, and then it finally got to a point where we can justify paying for that role. And so he went from just being David Hills, now he's data beige, Kind of a big deal, and I think that just it shows like when you have uh, when you live in your startup, you have those types of opportunities. Um, that doesn't mean you can't take on those types of roles and opportunities in a big company and just it just really doesn't matter. Um, so anybody looking for internships right now? Yes. Okay. So everybody that I, I reached out to this morning, sales marketing team, you know it's all coming back and saying, yeah, you know, are they a culture fit? Are they doing it right? Here's our core values at Stuket. So <laughs> when we look at the makeup of our team, the type of people that we want to come in, um, this is what we're looking for. Uh, they have to be like off the wall kind of people. You got a lot to tell me, Joe. Uh, <laughs> growth, winning. Honesty, dependability, consistency, and positivity. Uh, if they don't fit our core values, first and foremost, even if they are a rock star with a certain skill set, then they're not they're not coming in. They're not coming on our team. Um, and so, core values are huge. If you're looking for a sales role, your ability to communicate effectively, super important. Um, one of the things I mentioned in the last luncheon, uh, I mention this often because. I think there's a lot of there's a misconception that you have to be an extrovert, an extrovert to be in sales. I am by nature an introvert. Um, being around folks, like it at times can drain your energy, and so um, I have to be very strategic about how I prep to be in front of a group. Uh, there's a great book called The Introvert Advantage that uh, I learned some of the, the techniques that I use. Ability to learn on the fly. So, super important when you're coming in, um, you don't get a whole lot of time for training and ramp up. It's like day one, you're creating stuff, you're calling people. That's that's kind of that, that's kind of how we that's how we roll. That's how we how we operate. And um, and so if you're not up for that type of fast paced environment, probably not a fit for Stuket. But that doesn't mean you won't fit in another startup. Um, and then I'm a big believer of just. Grit, the book that I recommend all the time to folks that are looking for another book to read, uh, Grit, Power, Passion, and Perseverance, or Long-Term Goals. It's by Angela Duckworth. It's a great mix of research. It's not like your general, it's not like your Grant Cardone 10X gonna pump you up. It's more of, um, are you setting long-term goals and are you seeing them through? One of the concerns that I see most recent college grads coming to us and when I was at Target. Um, they want quick wins, like quick promotions to new roles and responsibilities before they've proven themselves in their current role. If you can make it in sales, you're gonna make it in other, other departments within the studio. It's a great place to start and prove yourself. But be patient for the long-term long -term goals. Um, every year or two, so you may not like me saying this, but every year or two, around Christmas time, when you're looking at those, you know, how the year has gone, how this next year is going to go, it's a good time to reevaluate when you're taking a week with your family over Christmas, Christmas holidays, and you're thinking about, man, this next year. And every year or two, I have to be very uh, intentional about saying, like, I'm all in this next year with this path. This is what I want to learn. This is what I want to accomplish. If I don't have 
uh, some clarity, I need to get clarity. And if it's the time for a different opportunity or a different road, then I need to be um, ready for that as well. So um, it just comes down to knowing what you want. And I think if you take the time to know what you want to learn and what you want to accomplish in every role that you take on, and your boss or your direct report knows that as well, they will help you get there. But ultimately, you, you're you responsible for your development and for your growth. So, grit, I kind of broke that up. Are you goal-oriented? Are you resilient? Are you an initiator? Are you a team player? Those are the types of things that we're looking for in our development. Okay, marketers. There's some tools to get familiar with. You guys probably are doing this in your own time. There's a, uh, is there a uh, marketer or sales? Sales platforms class? Technology, sales technology class. Okay, perfect. Um, HubSpot's the CRM that we use. We also use it for inbound marketing. Incredible tool. Uh, real quick, landscape of StuKent and CRMs. When StuKent first started, our first CRM was Salesforce. Salesforce with four people that did not need Salesforce. It was a Ferrari and all we needed was a Honda Civic. Right? So what did we do for a while? Well, we were locked into a plan, so we paid for that and we used Google Docs. Google Docs, not a fantastic way to go, but to get started, what we needed, like what we needed to get going, like to, to start bringing in some deals to justify, um, to, ju to justify something. Insightly was the next CRM that we used. Insightly was pretty good, uh, but we needed something that really helped with inbound marketing side and kind of brought those two worlds together and that's where we found the perfect marriage with HubSpot. Highly recommend it. Tons of training online. Um, I think there's a certification you can take uh, with HubSpot as well. Uh, the next one is so WordPress. It's where we host our website. I, I would say the PMM spent a lot of time in there editing, creating new landers, um, adjusting. We had new digital marketer that came onto a product marketing team and he's done some great great things with uh, certain videos that we're now tracking through Wistia and so we can see how much time they're spending on a video, how much they're watching, when they're hopping off. All those analytics are super important. There's so much value that the marketing team brings to our organization and it just comes into digging into the details and understanding the technology and how it might be Start off using MailChimp for email marketing. We use um, HubSpot now, and I think we actually do use MailChimp a little bit. So for our student database, if there are any students that want to come back to that opportunity, um, we keep them separate from our core business. And we obviously like the Google Suite. Um, like product marketing managers do a lot with uh, ad campaigns on Facebook or YouTube, for example. So you get a chance to take what you're learning in your digital marketing class and apply it here relatively quickly. Um, believe it or not, our best source of success in the last five years is still email marketing. Um, email marketing has been fantastic for us. Um, but it's leveraged in the right way. So one example, uh, some of our best lead generation conferences come when we get like a, a pre-conference email list. And the subject line of our email is, what's your favorite candy bar? And then all they have to do is respond back with Reese's or some, a lot of them be like off the wall, like out of country candy, bar, candy bars, but we have to go on Amazon to order those. But then they show up to the conference and we've got their candy bar right there at the booth. And it's just some way to create this personal connection. It's unique, it's different. Um, find ways to stand out and personalize what I always tell our sales team is, you know, the marketing team is focused on it a lot more from a strategic. Um, I would say marketing and sales emails are very different. Uh, the marketing emails are also, um, they spend more time on like the product and education. They do more giving than we probably should. There's a lot of give backs and freebies. We need to do a little bit more, a better job of deposit emails. Um, but the sales to spend time like very tactical with this individual teaching this course. They do research in this area, so we reference that. You know, we met them at a conference and they stopped at this restaurant because it was their favorite, and we referenced that in our follow-up email, etc. 
some way to stand out and make a crowd. So I mean, email marketing, we should be all over it. Not good for any industry, but for marketing in general. Um, obviously your social media channels, Wistia, has anybody heard Yahoo by chance? Uh, great for collecting um, reviews from your customers and showcasing those on your site in a beautifully designed way. FemRush, Adobe Suite, Cloudflare. So a lot of different tools that they're leveraging and we're always looking for new tools that the marketing team can try out. And that's one thing that's pretty neat. Um, we even caught this, uh, this company called GovSpend where you can see all of the, the money that, that uh, schools are spending because they're a government entity. All that stuff is public. And so we can see how much a high school is spending on financial courseware. Okay, they got a big budget for finance. It's time for us to have some financial courseware. Um, so there's tools that you can leverage for your strategic marketing strategy. Uh, that's the last one. Um, okay, just a few more lessons learned that I just want to share with you guys. It's super wordy. But I already mentioned the first one, develop your own personal board of directors. Identify your strengths and opportunities. Sort your strengths. Another great book, Strengths Finder. Um, making sure that you understand your blind spots so that they don't become roadblocks for you for your marketing. If it's ability to communicate, if it's being resilient and adaptable to change, if you don't like change, whatever those things are, be familiar with them and don't make them the priority or the focus. Focus on your strengths, where you're going to shine, but don't make sure you know your Some of the greatest values for me have been in just giving back. So my motto, enter, learn, go forth, and serve. I wholeheartedly <laughs> believe in that. If there's advisory boards you can get on, if there's mentorship programs you can be a part of, many ways of giving back and networking, um, I would say that's where a lot of satisfaction comes. And then the fourth one, again, just knowing what you want to what you want to learn, what you want to accomplish, and then finally. Okay, this is probably the most important one. <clears throat> Be comfortable being uncomfortable. Anybody a uh, runner by chance? Okay, got some runners, perfect. Um, so I just got into, I, I hated running growing up. Uh, a few years ago I got into running and now it's like therapeutic. It's like, yes, you can do the glory. You can just feel it when you're out there. Um, and so I've done a lot of endurance races and one of the things that I've found in endurance racing is there comes a point where your body feels like you just can't go any further and you know you've got five miles to go. And that's where your mindset has to kick in. Your mind has to turn in and say, you know, you've, you've only leveraged like 40% of your energy. There's still plenty left in the tank. Um, and when you're able to do that mentally, uh, you'll find that you can surpass what you thought was impossible. And once you get past the impossible, then the next impossible thing becomes that much more possible, if that makes sense. So doing hard things, overcoming them, boosts your confidence and allows you to set even bigger and more ambitious goals. So you go from a 5K to a 10K to a 50K to a half Ironman to an Ironman. Um, when you're just starting off, a half Ironman or Ironman sounds half Ironman, how am I going to swim 1.2 miles, bike 56, and then run 13.1 miles on the way home. Um, but it starts with a 5K run and realizing that it's okay to be uncomfortable. A lot of people in their careers, when they're uncomfortable, they either settle in um, and get complacent or they move on to something else. And then all that you've worked for and you're ready for your, you're trying to progress towards, it's all gone away, right? So stick, in, stick, stick to it in this is super important. Stay in there and don't get complacent. Remember what your why is, why you started it in the first place. What, um, yes, that is actually me at the top left corner. No, I'm not saying that. Um, I don't know, somewhere, somewhere up in Island Park. And I realized after the fact that you shouldn't bring my phone out that much. But uh, I grew up in California. What questions do you guys have? Yep, ask away. So I'd love to get your opinion on the length of the field prep in the Bay Area for the NFL. Yeah. Do you think the field is low? Like, 
versus around here locally? Yeah. So a startup there versus a startup in a different location? Yeah. Can you learn on the job? Definitely. Yeah. So, um, and one of the lines I, I mentioned earlier, like you own your development, um, that's that's true everywhere you go. I mean, you're going to have mentors, you're going to have bosses that are going to help you, coach you, mentor you. But ultimately, it's up to you to decide, am I going to learn this job to the best of my ability? Um, but yes, in Silicon Slopes, there's a plethora of options. Opportunities. Um, there's a lot of companies there. It's a lot few and far between in this neck of the woods. Um, but to say that their sales practices and their opportunities for growth are better than ours, um, I would disagree with. I think that we have just as much opportunity here. Um, the, the amount of companies, though, is just, it's hard to find the right fit for you in most of these places. But there's a lot of companies. What else? Yeah. What do you think the most important thing to you is that you can do in order to be successful? Man, I don't know where to begin. Um, know your audience. So I should know all of the nuances of my target audience. If you're taking a social media marketing class from Matt Broom, I think you're taking you're playing Mimic Social. And um, one of the first things that we teach in Mimic Social is about these different, so there's like a back to school model. And what backpack fits a back to school model? And what's her age range, her gender, I love Mimic Social. Um, her interests, um, her income range. <coughs> know know what to, how to target them, and then also what message or communication appeals to them. Um, one of the things that we still have a debate about is like whether you go with uh, professor so-and-so, where you call them by their first name, I've had a lot more success by calling them by their first name. And um, my emails are typically a little more, um, I don't know, but they're not as professional. They're, um, and, it's not, and it's not so much so that I think my cave are buddy-buddy, um, but I would say it's a different voice than you typically would think of in the education space. So know, know your audience. Matching their tone um, would also be super important. We've got a whole email marketing training um, that Trevor actually does with new hires for marketing and then also for people facing in sales. Um, and we dive in, we've been diving into our email sequences in HubSpot and identifying based on key performance indicators. So we're looking at like open rate, click through rate, uh, reply rate, demo rate. We're looking at all these KPIs to see yes, we should throw this email out, or hey, more people should be using this email. So after you've identified your audience and you start to communicate with them and A-B test the different emails, you're looking at your KPIs to know what's successful and what is. What training I'm looking forward to. Yep, what class I'm in. Yeah, Trying both. So when I was in Provo, lots of startups that I worked for, I worked for several. Um, and I knew then that I would always get back into that world. And I know now that eventually I will start my own business at some point. Um, but startup world, then I went to corporate America and learned a lot, a lot there. And almost everybody that I worked really closely with are still in corporate America. Most of them are at Amazon now. So um, they knew that was their fit. It fits their lifestyle. Um, their supply chain, like what I was doing, uh, you have to consider how much time you're spending at work. What does that environment look like? Um, your day to day. So uh, that was shift work, uh, nights and weekends. And you got put on like, I was on a night and weekend shift at one point. Um, I was on a Saturday, Sunday, Monday shift where I was, it was 14 hours a day, but it was only three days a week. I got four days off. Um, I'd get home at 6 in the morning on Sunday, get dressed, go to PEC, work council, uh, go to a SACRA meeting, and then I'd go home and like nap for like an hour or two, and then I went back at work. And 
I just knew like I had to get through these three days. And then I was like, okay, am I ready to get back into the startup world? This boot camp came along, and for the first two months, I worked. I didn't give up my day job. I worked Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, and then I worked Tuesday through Friday, eight hours a day at Stew Camp for two months, which was really hard on my family. Uh, it was really hard for me personally, and I knew that I was gonna have to give up a lot to get there, and I wanted to see if I had what it takes, and I wanted to make sure I could sell it. Sometimes it means a little hustle outside of your day job, nights and weekends, to see if it's what you really want and what you really need. But to me, I was ready. Give or take. Larry Blasted in the comments and said he was still with Microsoft. He wasn't able to sell his data to the world. Accounting, financial business, super important. Marketing, marketing uh, 200, 200 email blast. My, my, my marketing class was probably. If I were to go back, that's probably the first one I chose to do. That's probably it. What you guys are like, man, that's a long ass video. We're here. What else? Yeah. Um, so scaling a business and scaling your team is really challenging. I don't think there's one right answer. Um, for us, it came when we had the resources or finances to do so. Um, and it's really healthy for a leadership team to have different vantage points and disagree a little bit. So I would say, this is a little insight into Stu Kent, um, not very many people will try and push against Stu on certain decisions. I'm that guy um, where we'll go head to head on decisions. Um, and then eventually, it's not about who wins, but it's like eventually we'll decide what is the best decision moving forward. And I would say I err on the side of um, let's hire sooner, and maybe he's more of a hire when it hurts. And so we find that good common ground. Um, but you know, for, I, I personally produced and led a team for three, just over three years. Could I have just moved, moved into a strategic role sooner? Maybe. Um, would we have been able to close as many deals? Maybe. It's hard to know. And so when you're looking at scaling a sales organization, for example, um, if there's big salaries involved or hourly, hourly rates involved, it's just a matter of financing. How quickly are funds coming in? We're in the education space, and we have waves or windows when most of the money will come in during the beginning of each semester. And so we have to plan our money accordingly, which means through the nose most times with what organizations have the assets to do so. But I didn't really answer your question fully, but we're at a point now where I would tell, tell you anybody that looks to be the right fit, like I'm trying to find a way for me to be the right fit for my team. And so uh, the bar has certainly been raised for all those different reasons. Any last questions before we wrap up? Okay, thank you guys, appreciate it. Hey guys, I'm gonna do something really quick. Sorry, Brandon, come over here. Everyone, I want you to get kind of behind Brandon. We're gonna take a picture of you behind him. Not like here, but like sort of stand up. A little bit of energy. Is this for some marketing campaign? Maybe, this maybe for your marketing campaign to get you guys hired, yeah? Put a brand 